Can I give you one more peak performance aging fact Please. that is helpful? Yeah. All right. People often want to say, they come to me, where do I start? Where do you begin with? And the place you got to begin is mindset. So the mind-body connection gets tighter and tighter and tighter over time, and it plays a significant role in aging and peak performance aging, and mindset is the greatest example. So we've got 50 years of data. Ellen Langer at Harvard started this back in the 70s. It's been carried forward by dozens of people. A positive mindset towards aging. I am thrilled with the second half of my life. I, my best days are ahead of me. Translates to an additional eight years of healthy longevity. It's wild. This means, check it out, you could be morbidly obese and have a shitty mindset towards aging, change your mindset, you'll live longer. Incredible. Don't lose weight, change your mindset. It's more important. In fact, changing your mindset is more important than quitting smoking for healthy longevity. And we understand the inverse. Becca Levy at Yale figured out that people who have a negative mindset towards aging and or exposed to ageism, which is the most common stereotype in the world, by the time they get to age 60, will exhibit, for one example, 30% greater memory decline than those with a positive mindset towards aging and not exposed to ageist views. So that long, slow rot theory is killing us, right, literally, and <clears throat> having a bad mindset is killing us. And so if you wanna go on this journey, you gotta change your mindset. So how do you do that? There's some data. Meditation is useful. Psychedelics can be useful and watching your language and how you talk about yourself that really, really useful. But all of that is secondary evidence and the brain has a really good built-in bullshit detector. And so what really works the best is a NAR style quest. Where you find something that you think is really difficult for yourself, right? When I looked at park skiing, everybody else saw impossible. I thought, oh fuck, really difficult and really scary, but maybe not impossible, right? So find a NAR style quest. Back to my point, is your dad 70 bump skiing. Since we've done this, we've trained like five or 600 people and people are doing everything. I've got 70 and 80 year olds taking up kite surfing for the very first time. People in their 60s and 70s rock climbing on and on. And some of the people aren't even doing action sports, which I love. Like there's a woman in Japan, very shy, quiet, great artist. She's in her 60s, I wanna say maybe in her 70s. She's never had a show. She's made work her entire life. She's fantastic. I mean, like really fantastic. It's not like you look at her work, you're like, oh lady, don't, don't do this, right? <laughs> I can't believe you know. She's that shy and that introverted. And so her NAR style quest is to have her first show at age 60, I think it's 64, which she's doing. So the stories are sort of endless and they've been, you know, as the book has spread wider and wider and wider and more people read it, the stories keep floating back and they're cooler and cooler. Right. So yeah, there's big perceived risk there and there's some actual risk. Like it's not like it's totally risk free to do your own show. It's um, not but it, risk free. Yeah. And one of the things that people always forget, one of the things about risk that is so important is um, the dopamine that's underneath it. The brain doesn't physical risk, Social risk and financial risk are all the same as far as the brain is concerned. And um, creative risk, spiritual risk, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All these things give us the neurobiological reaction you want. So yeah, what you want is the neurobiology. How you get it, you can vary it a lot.